Online. I went for a program yesterday morning, uh, yesterday, and it was a retreat from um, um, 12 noon to about 12 midnight. So, by the time I was back, before I was sleeping, it was late, so I didn't wake up in time. So sorry for coming up a bit late. I now remember that today is Saturday, so they can dwell in the presence of God. Good morning, good morning. Let no one in the hostels escape your revival fire. So I wanted to ask, how many people have started experiencing testimonies about about provision? You know, the last time we did the still for provision. What, what you, you did be still about the provision you focused on God for. So, did you get it? Hmm. Okay, please, can you share your testimony? We did we still prayers about provision the other day, and I'm wondering if anybody has started seeing results, especially in the line you did it, because in that line, in that place. Great, great, great. Because I have started enjoying provision, it's happening like magic. Provision was day four. It was day four because yesterday was day five, and what we did was I just talked about ministry angels, but and today is day six, so it's day four. We did. For provision. I haven't gotten all I wrote on my list, but two days ago he provided money for me to purchase. Okay. Okay. I'm telling you, like I've been getting provision, like, provi like for what I could, I, I did be still about. That is how powerful it is, okay? That is how powerful it is. Hmm. So we're going to do be still today. No. No points. Beating about the bush. So much today. We'll just uh, be still. Uh, thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to send the link out. Mm. You can send the link out too. 
Yes, I'm send the link out. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we're going to do the still prayer second. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, we're going to do the still prayer second. This morning. Um, oh, God is putting my spirit. I was. So maybe we should. <clears throat> so, so do you understand that you can just do the still prayers for one thing for over a period of time? I think I'm just trying to make you understand the possibilities available. Okay. So because of it, I'm just being open, vulnerable, and talking about a couple of things. So God told me to start fasting about a particular thing for the next 30 days, and it should be still prayers. So, I'm, yeah, okay, the fasting is ongoing, right? But I'm starting the day one of that 30 days be still prayers for that particular thing and that's what you've been doing 30 days it's actually very powerful it's very powerful let, let me let me share Let me share this. There was somebody I was in a relationship with last year, and the Lord said I should go on a 40 days fast and be still prayers for the for the relationship. And I was and I said, okay. I started doing it one hour every day. But the person didn't know. And I kept doing it, doing it. And things were just opening up. Things were just opening up. I was just saying a whole lot. I said, ah. I kept saying, and I said it was not. A happy ending. It was not. And and I saw God tell me, I am not in it. You think I'm a, I am in it, but I'm not. <laughs> shocking. Very shocking. And as I came out of that experience, I knew that this can't continue. I'm just trying to tell you that you can do be still prayer for anything for over a period of time over a period of time so for instance if it is for um like what i one of the things i saw oh let me not mention in case the person comes across this video <laughs> let me let me see what i saw i mean so, but yeah Okay, so I knew he wasn't in it, so he moved. So then I want, I, I, I feel like giving us a challenge. Can you do be still prayers for the next 
See, God gave me a word that he wants to do supernatural things in the next three months in our lives. Maybe for your life in general. Okay, I will explain again. Maybe in every aspect of your life. But can you do a still prayer for the next 90 days? Like, get you a calendar. Place it. Fix a time, not negotiable by, by anyone. One hour. You just come and drop your life in God's hands at his feet and say, Lord, my finance, my marriage, my spiritual life, my mental life, my social life, my all aspect of my life. I put it. Do you know it can be your devotion? You just stay in his presence. I've come to like to surrender because that's where you see the greatest power. So at that moment, when you do peace prayers concerning some things, you realize that. You realize that. How am I going to explain this? That nothing, you know this delay. Delay does not work in be still. No, 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 no. Delay, like, oh, I prayed, I prayed. No, if you know you did be still prayers, seriously, for provision, and you know what you asked God to provide for you for, you should have started seeing results. You should have started seeing signs in that direction. Like, the provision has been coming from the strangers of places. Do you understand? So, so it does not. Beastie prayer is not go come. <laughs> it's not something that you waste time to get answers. You get it instantly. It, oh, I can call it the realm of instance. The realm of instance, like it's just. Instance. It's just instant. So please try. Don't play with your year, your life this year. Okay? Don't. Don't play with it. The problem we have is we don't have consistency. Oh, another challenge is that we do not we do not we do not we do not know how to press now for instance you see um there was one day i met this woman this woman was talking about how she was so broke her rent was almost over so many things she said she met this pastor and told the pastor how did you become this successful like I had to, I remembered it this morning and even me, I'm even beating myself up that I have not been focused with Bistil Prayers. Like Bistil Prayers should just be your life. And she said, she said something um, that she told the man, how can I become successful in life? What? How, how are you doing it, sir? And the man said, she now said that, oh, she said she has read this book, The Law of Attraction. And she has been practicing words in The Law of Attraction. And nothing has happened. The man told her, the man is a pastor. The man told her that even him, he has practiced Law of Attraction. But I will do that. I will do that before we start. But it has not worked for him. But there is something he knows that he will tell her. He said, but he will not tell her today. She begged him. She begged him. The man said, okay. It is not even in, you know, in the love attraction, they talk about, I, I don't know, talking. You're not saying, I want this. I have it. Stuff like that. So this woman was just, just I, I, I actually went for a conference, so she was talking about how you can really grow, that there are some secrets that people know that she will, so most of the people had left, so the few of us that stayed back to listen to her, 
she said okay i'm going to tell people this secret i usually don't tell people because people might think it's demonic is this so i'm just looking what is this woman talking about so it's, since you're thinking it's demonic should i be should i just leave already yes i i don't know so but i thought the only people wanted me to stay back so i stayed and she said are you ready i will not just tell you i will show you i said okay so everybody sat back she said, everybody take a position of your choice make sure you're in a relaxed state you did she now said take a deep breath as it uh, exhale this this see by the time she, she just said focus on what you desire no first of all remove the things that you do not desire remove them from your mind and the next thing start taking thinking of focusing on only that thing you desire i just said is it for still this prayer this woman is doing but guess what she's just doing it like that she's not doing it with christ now that is why i keep telling you that there is a counterfeit of everything even the law of attraction is the bible they just don't want where they should call jesus or god they call it uh universe the law of attraction is much it's mark 11 23 to 24 whatsoever you desire pray about it believe it and it shall so they just call it universe so that they can scrap out god scrap out god from the world scrap out god and just because god is merciful god said something in his word <clears throat> god said something god said something in his word he said that he said something um god said something in his word right <clears throat> Um, that <clears throat> oh, just distracted right now. Mm. What was I saying? What was I saying? I'll be back wherever it was. So, one thing that happens is that they just make us feel like they just want to scrap God out of everything. Okay, yes, God said something in His Word. He said that He's the God. That, he's not the God that because these people are evil and these people are good, that rain is rain will just fall for the righteous and it will not fall for the sinners when he's sending down rain when he's sending down rain when he's sending down rain he's sending rain to both those evil doers and those righteous people he's sending rain to everybody it's just that when it's time he can show up so that's why you see i keep telling people that the world right what the world is doing is they are following the principles of christ but they don't want to identify with his person then we, the believers, are identifying with the person, but we are not following his principles. Hence, why we barely have results? Because principles give results. Principles give results. So you see that, oh, this person is um, experiencing miracles. They are following the principles in scriptures without saying that it is the principles in scriptures, identifying with the person. But you are calling Jesus, Jesus. Okay, are you doing the things that Jesus said you should do? That is why the result. So this woman now give us, now give us, um, this woman now give us. That is, is the kingdom principles that God was saying, seek first the kingdom of God. What he means is there is a way that things work around here. There is a way things work around here. They say way things work in this kingdom. And what that the way it works are called principles. So as you are searching scriptures, you are searching principles. Oh, if I want to have this thing, the Bible says if I give, right? Give. It will be pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Shall who give us men? It's not God. He said, Shall men give unto you? Give and it shall be given unto you. So, you want it to be given to you, you have to give first. It, it has to be given to you. So, give and it shall be given to you. That is the principle of God. You want to get, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure. 
It's a good measure that will be given to you. Press down. So the more is good, you press it down to make it bigger. Shaking together and running over shall who give you? Men. Not God. So so for all your givings. So so I think, but God now mentioned something about the giving. The way you give it matters. They say he God loves a cheerful giver. So it's possible that you are not cheerful and you are trying to give. It will, you won't get the results that comes with the kingdom. You won't get it. That's why you see sowing seeds, your offerings, all those things, they are important. That, that is it. But you now notice that it's the other people that don't call Jesus that are givers. They have this charity. <clears throat> the other day, during COVID, I noticed it was a video of Dubai, right? Dubai made sure they provided food for everybody during the time of COVID. So they go through the whole city giving food. And it's not any kind of food. It's a food that will take care of you morning to evening. They are applying principles. So as a nation, they are giving to their people. So if the money wants to come back, it's going to, and they are giving it with joy. If the money wants to come back, it's coming back. Good measure, press down. Then you see how the nation is growing. You see how the nation is blossoming. You're thinking they are joking. Okay, look at our own nation. They hid the food they should give to people. How will Nigeria experience good measure, press down, shaking together? So you see that they are violating the principles that makes things happen for... for so, so you see things like that and you're wondering, no, go to the root cause. Go to the root cause. So, to fix some things, you must take care of the, the root that is going to bear up the tree that will bear fruits. At one time in church, I had this vision. Okay, I think I just had 100 Naira. And, and that 100 Naira, no, is it 100? I had 200. So, and I needed 100 Naira. I had 200 Naira notes. And I needed... 100 naira to go back home. So I wanted to give my offering 100. So, but I forgot to change the money. So I was caught up in service and all of a sudden, <clears throat> all of a sudden, I realized that, I realized that, wow, I did not, um, I've not changed the money and it's offering time. I turned, I asked the person, I said, do you have change to um, 100, 100 naira? No. Do you have? Nobody had. So I was now saying, ah, I'm, there's nobody I'm going to, I'm sure I'm going home with you. How am I going to go home? And I usually take a tricycle home. So it's not, so how am I going to go home? I can't track it. I can't. So, and the offer basket is going around. And they're almost getting to me. So I collected the basket. My offering is here. I wanted to drop it. I just dropped it and moved it. So, like, the church is winners. So, you know, they always, as far as the offering basket goes, they meet in the front and empty the baskets. So, by the time they finish, they said we should pray. By the time we were praying, I was caught up. I was caught up. And I had this vision. And I, I saw two angels. They went to each of the um, offering baskets. Right? They went to each of the offering baskets. And they did like this. And the money I saw in the air was like, one, two, three, four, five, let's say 15 to 20, like, money in the air. I, I, I asked them, what are you doing? 
What 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 does that mean? Why is those money in the basket, uh, in the air? What what's happening? And they were like, among all these people that give offering this morning, uh, this morning, okay, it was a midweek service. He said, this is the only offering that is pleasing to the Lord. We are over two thousand people here, Lord. And it is only 20 people's offering that is pleasing, that is coming unto the Lord as a memorial. It's coming unto the Lord as a sweet, sweet smelling savour. Why? And I said, my money there. I said, definitely, my money is not there. I said, why? <clears throat> what happened? He said that. The way you give your offering matters. He said that your offering is, is, a, is supposed to is a, God loves a cheerful giver. So you're supposed to be excited that, oh my God, I'm going to church to give God because who am I to give God? Is it not what he has given to me that I'm giving to him? But some people will be like, the change in their pocket. It's offering time. Like, there's no preparation. If you even check in the Old Testament, right? If you check in the Old Testament, you will see that the preparation before they give the offerings, then they were giving animals and all of this. There is this preparation. There is this intentionality. Ah, I can't offer to God something that is small. It has to be without spot and without wrinkle. It has to be... And some of us will just squeeze the money like this. Yes, bro. Oh, it's offering time. Is that a, Oh, it's offering time. Wow. Yeah. You have 1,000, you have 500, you bring 100 naira. <laughs> hey! I didn't recover from that experience. I said, what? He said, even though, he said, the, the moment you were contemplating, con so sometimes when I find myself contemplating, I will just, okay, this offering will not even reach heaven, just pass. Then I will repent. After repenting, I will say, Lord, I'm sorry. And I want to really offer this. I'm a cheerful, I want to be a cheerful giver. Then I will become excited I'm giving. Then I will drop it. Then I will drop it. That's why there are some people that that's one of my friends. He can't give God money if it is not minted. He prepares for it in the beginning of the year. There was one who, I don't even know why I'm going in this direction. Like, Lord, what's up? Are you getting what I'm saying? So, like, there are some people that they prepare every Sunday. Okay, you have four Sundays, maybe and four midweek services, and then your salary is 100K. And you're giving, let's say, let me just, let me exalt this issue right now. You're giving, <clears throat> you're giving God 500, 500, 500. Some people are not giving 500. I just want you to understand. But you're giving God 500, 500, 500, 500 for four Sundays. 500, 500, 500 for four Sundays. What is this? 4K out of your 100K. Wow. And then you'll go, Lord, I need financial breakthrough. Uh, hello. Where is the principle of the kingdom that you are following? Your 500, in your, in your mindset, you're doing well. Your salary is 100K. And you're giving 500 every Sunday. 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. 4K. 4K. 4. 4K. For your hundred k, okay. Let's say your ten percent of your tight is ten thousand. So, from the money that God puts in your hand, that's why when you now lose your job, when you're crying, God give me a job. You used to make God. You're not understanding. You're not getting it. You're not getting it. Ah, <laughs> ah. Uh, uh. I'm just giving, these are principles for money in this kingdom. These are principles for finance 
in this kingdom. These are principles for finance in this kingdom. There's no, see, so the problem is that we are not following these principles of the kingdom. So how can we, how can we experience what God does? No. How? So, it's all these things. So, whenever you want to become, express something in God, go search it out in scripture. Find the principles that makes that thing work. By the time you are done doing it, begin to implement the principles. And you will see that if you experience that miracle. But no. So, you know, we say, why is it that? Is it that unbelievers? Is it that the devil is more powerful than God? Like some questions just come and you're like, some of us, our problem is that we are lazy. We are lazy to, to work on the principles of scriptures. Yes. Some of us want to be the richest person like Solomon. Did you, did you see what triggered that? Did you, did you see the kind of sacrifice he gave? Did you see what triggered it? That made God come, show up. Did you see the kind of sacrifice? And he didn't do them grumbling. No, he didn't do it grumbling. If you even notice, in scripture, in scripture, they say when you're fasting and praying, you should also give. Have you been around the Muslims? No. No. During their fasting season, everybody eats and you don't, they don't, you, no, you don't get it. You just see that the woman spends time cooking and she's not cooking in, because I was born in the north, so I had this experience firsthand. Like, she's not cooking that, oh, I'm going to give those guys, those um, boys that are homeless, they call them armadjiri, homeless, give them just any kind of, no, 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 they don't do that. They cook what they will eat. Bring up, bring it in portion. So you're seeing that even the guys on the street are eating rice and chicken. If it's rice and chicken they ate in their house, they're eating it. They're eating it. Fasting and prayers and giving of alms is in the scripture. But, mm -mm. How many of us are intentional about as we are fasting, we are giving arms? How many? And yet you say, I fasted, the way I fasted in 2020, the way I fasted in 2019, I had not gotten any results. Is it that God does not want to answer my prayer? I'm tired. You're tired. Go search your word. Search the word of God. Search the scriptures. Find truth for yourself and tell it to set you free. So, back to the story I was sharing. This woman now said she had rent issues that they were going to eject her that morning. And this man just taught her that stuff like one week before. That, like that way to experience instant miracles that's how he explained it to her but they were just not calling god's name and she said that she started by 12 midnight she said she does not have a choice that this man is going to come this morning to send her out and she sat from the middle of the night and she stayed in that posture focusing on finance for her rent for she said that she did it for like almost five hours and she literally saw a demonic figure in her room the shadow she looked she didn't see it but she was seeing the shadow and she saw that fire came and consumed it and chased it out of her house 
and she started seeing money flowing in. Okay, I think she's a Christian. She did it the Christian way. The Christ way. Yes. She's, because she saw that this thing, and she saw a hedge of fire protect her, and casted out the demon, and it left. And the next thing that happened was, okay, this was, okay, getting to, like, about 7 a.m., so, I'm not sure, but she says over five hours she was like that, and next thing that happened was, after that thing left, the next thing that happened was, she had a call on her phone. Someone that she worked for, like a salesperson, very long time ago, called her, where are you? Are you still in this town? Say yes. Come over, I'm, I'm in town. She said, Lord, she just went. Yes, she, she did it with God. Yeah, she did it with God. She did it with God. She just went, and this woman said, I don't know, how are you doing? After G, so much G, so much G, so much G. The woman just said, I don't know. I feel like giving you money. She just put her, I gave her her complete rent. You don't understand? Do you understand that? Gave her her complete rent. Everything complete. That's be still prayers for you. So be still prayers is not that it's going to take months for it to come to pass. No. It's instant. So let me explain be still prayers because we will do be still prayers. Today. So, and then she, since then she says she has been an addict of it. As I'm talking to you now, she has been an addict of that. Yes, she's a Christian. I remember, I was mistaking her for someone else. I remember she in this Abuja she has bought like four houses. The list is thirty million. And she said that this is she does not miss praying at night. She does not miss praying at night. And then she now mentioned that there was a time she had a spinal injury or something, and she had to go to India. When she went to India, they told her that she mustn't go to the hospital. That there is a woman that can that will pray for her and it will be fine and she was like okay she said she was in excruciating pain and she said that this woman what she was doing she was like is this woman joking this woman was doing be still prayers on her back for over like three hours or so <clears throat> and that's how her spinal injury healed completely like completely she it was a miracle she knows that but, so that was when she now said that she did this thing a few times that she, she has to do this thing for a way of life she has to just keep praying this way always being still and knowing that he's god when you are still you make him show up that you make him show off and show up, uh, show up and show off. Good. They call it manifestation. But we we are not doing that. We are crying. That's why I tell us, whenever you are doing be still. Let me explain be still right now. Be still prayers. Wow. So I'm going to go through the story again. Mister prayers is. <clears throat> this is how it's done, right? Like I was sharing the experience that led to it. <clears throat> okay, I've shared the possibilities. So, but the day it happened to me was years back, over uh, five years ago now, and my brother needed to pay his fees, and he was cooling in Ghana. So first of all, it was his registration at least first, and he was in Nigeria here, so he, there was no money. So I went out and I came back. To the house and everybody was saying that no money my brother's registration and they said today is the last day and i was like wow i didn't know what to do and i was just coming from church because <clears throat> i went to study in the church so 
I, I called the people from church, so I was just like, okay, wow. So, and they were like, he's going to miss a semester. So I said, okay, no problem. I'll be back. I have to go back to church. When I went back to church, I was just really confused. I didn't know what to do, how to do it, how to fix anything. So, when I went into the church, I went straight and I fell on my face on the floor and the posture i took was like i'm holding the feet of jesus i said jesus you i don't know the miracle that's going to happen now but this boy can miss this semester this boy cannot miss this semester please you cannot so i held on so i felt like i was holding down his legs jesus's leg that you need to help so in that moment he started teaching me i have this book on healing by Smith Wigglesworth and when I read it it showed a scene of um when Smith when Smith um when Smith um had this was still a brother in church he was not a, he wasn't a pastor or a man of God yet so a member came to meet the pastor and he was with the pastor and said sir please come and pray for my wife so that when she dies God will receive her soul the pastor was like, why would you do that? Why would you say that? He now said, let's follow you. Let's go pray. By the time they got there and the pastor and Smith saw the woman, the pastor started praying and said, Father, heaven, please receive the soul of this woman. Smith was like, why? Why would you say that? He now said, look at her. There's nothing. God cannot do anything about this situation. Like, there's no hope for this. Like, she should go and rest. And she knows, you know, say, can I at least try? Can I at least try to pray? Let's not give up. Can I try? And he said, okay. And they left him alone in the room. He said, when he looked at the woman, she was terrified. He was terrified, like, because I think she, she, she was so lean that you can see her bones, like, it didn't really look like anything can come out of it. So, he now looked, he was terrified, and like I explained, this is the bed. This is Smith standing here. And this is the Lord. So all of a sudden, Jesus appeared here. And Smith is standing here by the bedside. Look, and he just saw Jesus. And he started looking at Jesus' face. And Jesus started smiling at him. And he was just lost. Smiling back at Jesus. He lost consciousness of everywhere. And the next thing that happened was, the woman sneezed. She has been lying, she has been bedridden for years. She stood up. It now looked like flesh came back. It was a supernatural miracle. And she stood up. And wow. She's fine. And everybody. So God now reminded me of that story. And when he reminded me of the story, I was like, okay. So what should I do now? Excuse me. So I just knew that God wanted me to do the same thing. So I said, okay. So what I did was, I now lay down. I presented my brother's registration before God. And I focused my gaze on his face. And I just imagined him smiling at me the way Smith mentioned. And I was doing that and I got lost. Like, I got lost lying down there. I think I even slept off. By the time I woke up, I felt at peace. And I said, thank you, Jesus. And I went back home. On getting to the house, my brother was receiving a call in front of me. A call just came in. And he picked up and his friends were like, Guy, now, why are you doing like this? What was what, the meaning of this? He said, why? He said, you registered two weeks ago. And we have been trying to see what we can do to help you register. I said, what? He said, what are you guys saying? I did not register. He said, go to the website, Joe. Only for somebody to just say, let's even check this guy's um, page, uh, website. And they checked. Only to find out that you had registered two weeks ago. <laughs> My brother was like, wow. 
He said, hold on, let me check. My brother went and checked and saw that it was showing that he registered two weeks ago. Till date, is not traceable. We didn't, we didn't pay no money now. That's how this guy got <laughs> registered. It was even backdated to two weeks ago. And I said, what in the world is this? So, that is be still prayers. And that's how instant it was. In fact, it's wonderful. Those that did be still prayers for provision, you are supposed to have tested in results. Instead, if not, you didn't do it well. You did not do the be still prayers. Because we did for provision. So, that was it. So, that's it. So, the way to do be still prayers, so sometimes your gaze, the main thing, the main thing in all these things is that when your gaze is on Christ, it makes that pro uh, problem to become tiny. Like, see what happens. If this is Christ and this is the issue, if this is the issue before to you, when you show your issue, God, that you're not focusing on this issue, you're focusing on your God, you notice that the issue start melting away. It start melting away. It fizzles out and it's gone. All gone. Now, in the Bible, that was what happened to Adam. Adam was looking for a suitable helpmate amongst the animals and didn't find one. So, what did God do? God made him sleep. Great. You see? God made him sleep. They said a deep sleep came on him. So, that was an in that God needed him to be still. So that... He can get his miracle. God needed him to be at rest. Did Adam, was he talking? No. God needed him to be still. So he was still and God brought his, made his wife. And by the time Adam was waking up, did you see how instant it is? It's not that after God made his wife, he kept her far, far away. As God was, as he was waking up, behold, your wife. Even the earth was without form and void. And the earth was in a stillness. And the Spirit of God was hovering over it, preparing it for its miracle. So, because that is the gaze. Christ being the gaze, God being the gaze, and all of a sudden, in Genesis, we saw how out of nothing came a beautiful earth. So, it's, it's powerful. Oh, is it the pattern of the Red Sea? They're between the Egyptians and the Red Sea, and Moses said, Moses is like, people are like, you brought us here, and God said, be still. For the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. Be still. God does not need your help. He just needs you in his presence still. <laughs> he just needs you there. Still. And then he was still. It was in that stillness that instruction came. What do you have in your hand, the rod? Can you stretch it? And the impossible happened. Instantly. Like what I'm trying to em emphasize is instant. Instantly. Don't expect anything less. It's instantly. Instantly. It's instantly. And he did it and there was a pattern of the red scene. I have had so many testimonies from this. So, that is it. Mm -hmm. So, be still prior. So, you come, you're focusing your gaze either on the word God gave you. If God promised you with the word, 
you're focusing your gaze on that word. You're staying in his presence, you drop the issue, and then you come and you're meditating on that word. You're thinking of that word. From there, guess what? You can go on a journey. That's why I always ask for a paper and pen beside you. Go on a journey. God can start taking you to places. Taking you, taking you to heaven, taking you to different places, or telling you that if you do this and do this like this, if you go there and go there like this, if you you just see pictures or you hear words, anyone that happens, pen them down. If they come, if they are instructions, work with them. If they are encouraging words, be encouraged. Waste instant. So now with this explanation, or then the face of God, and then someone will now ask me, well, how why are we imagining Jesus? Uh, the Bible says in um, Ephesians three twenty that uh, God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ever ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. But emphasis on all we can ever ask with our mouth or think. So that's why you're meant to have the mind of Christ by meditating on the word of God so that your thought is naturally what Jesus would think. That's the mind of Christ. If you have, if, 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 if you have, yes, yes, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, yeah. If you have the mind of Christ, hmm, you will not see See how Jesus' mind works. You see a sick man. Oh, he's blind. Oh, he's... No, Jesus' mind does not say he's blind. Oh, I can help him. I can give him eyes. I can give him sight. That's his mind. I, and I want to give it to him. Take it. I want to do this for I want to. I can do it. I want to because I can and I will. That's the mind of Christ. He's always thinking positive about every situation. So, let's do be still. So, so what are we doing be still about now? What do you guys want us to do be still? Or let's do be still about our personal problems. Oh, you know what? No. The theme of this fasting is that I may know him. So let's do be still about knowing God, having a revelation of him. So we're going to and I, I mentioned you can use music and you can stay without music, so um and usually if it's without music, most people that are doing it for the first time might experience that notice that their spirit is wandering because silence is what happens on the outside. Silence is what happens on the outside. Silence is what happens on the outside. Stillness is what happens on the inside. Stillness. Okay. Yes. Stillness is what happens on the inside. I don't know if anybody noticed what I just did now. I just did something like this. And what was that? Because I saw somebody here that almost had a fire outbreak in their house. So what I did was I canceled it. So sometimes if people are staying around me, they see too many actions. I look like this. See, can you do be still? Yes, that you can. That is it, you can. Oh, see, be still. For instance, when you start, for it, it's you initiating it. But before you know it, haven't you woken up in the morning and worship song is playing inside you and you're not singing it? Your spirit is worshiping. You can join it. <laughs> or you wake up and there is this scripture in your spirit. So, the more you do be still, it becomes default. Okay? It becomes default. So, like, and it makes you see things this. So like this thing I saw while we were talking now is because that's why the Bible talks about having a quiet and a, uh, a gentle and a quiet spirit. 
quiet spirit. So we become so like this fire outbreak I just saw now is because my spirit is still permanently because of, by reason of continuous practice. So I'm, I'm just I'm here. I'm talking physically, but my spirit is still. Is still so. I saw that and I. So people are just they're tired of me. Bro. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, if I not cancel it, Uncle, you just cancel it. Can we move on to the next thing? So yes, okay yes. So what happens if you wake up and you wake up with that song? Focus on it. That is your message for that day. That's the word God wants to use to feed your spirit. Then you can go along and find scriptures as regards that song that was playing in your spirit or that verse that was in your spirit. God wants you to feed on it. God wants that word to bring light into your spirit. God wants that word to become flesh because he's giving you that word in preparation for something that is coming. So for instance, if it is a praise song that you woke up with, Oh, something is about to happen that will make you praise God. So focus on the song, pray with the song, do everything with the song throughout that day. If the song continues, let it continue. If it's a word of God, just then start meditating on it. Whatever it is, he's giving you heads up in your spirit. That is how God speaks to man. People are waiting for thunder and lightning before they hear God speak. But that is God speaking to you. He's giving you heads up. He's giving you through a song. He's giving you through... You just woke up and you're waking up to an image of fruits. And you need. To, you don't just stop. It's your, because you were sleeping. That's why, one of the reasons why we have dreams. One of the reasons why we have dreams is because we are always in our still states. We're always in our still states. When we are sleeping. So God knows that if you are awake, he can't talk to you. You're not still at all. It's when you're sleeping. He now brings it to you and tells you while you're sleeping. But the way you're dreaming, you can be awake dreaming. Like what I mean is that you can be awake having visions. Seeing literally like seeing. And the same thing he would have told you if you were sleeping. You can be awake. That is how you grow in him. So yes, so you're not limited to... Some people, uh, I remember before when it was only dreams, God communicated to me. So if I ask God a question, I'll be like, okay, Lord, please, Lord, I need to know this answer. I will make sure I finish everything I'm doing just to go and make sure I sleep so that God can give me the answer. <laughs> but it was for the level of my knowledge then. So then I'll be like, I'm a dreamer, I'm a dreamer. Yes, I'm a dreamer. But you can grow in him. And you can become a daydreamer. <laughs> Oh, like you're just awake, awake dreamer. What I mean is open visions and so stuff. So yeah. So now, let's let's pray. Let's pray. Let's do our best by us. So um, well, do you know what we should do today? Let's just be still. Let's not come with requests. Let's just be still and say, God, we want to know you. We want to re- reveal yourself to us. We just want to have a revelation of you. We just want to see how beautiful you are. So we drop on his face. Say, Lord, I just want to know how beautiful you are. I just want to understand you. I just want to know you more. Then you just stay. But guess what? Because when you come to God like that, he can end up talking to you about yourself. Or even about nations. Me, I noticed that if I want God to talk to me about me, I should be interceding for others. So when I'm praying for this person, God will be telling me my own stuff. So I barely pray for me. So I'm praying for so that's why I'm an intercessor. If I'm praying for nations, God is telling me things about me. So yeah. Um so let's do this. So take any posture of your choice. You can sit. You can sit, you can lie down. Face up, you can lie down with your belly on the floor, whatever the case might be. Just take a posture. And the Bible says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you think of yourself in God's presence, you are. Yes, you are. So take a deep breath. We're going to do this because I'll be out of here by 8, definitely. 
so that means we're going to do it for 10 minutes let's see what happens in 10 take a deep breath exhale take a deep breath exhale take a deep breath okay so the lord i've come to know you more show me a part of you i've not seen before or even though i've seen it show me again now focus your gaze on god on christ if you can imagine him look smiling at you or just keep in mind i want to know you if your spirit is wandering just keep saying in your head I want to know you. I just want to know you. Say it sincerely like, I just want to know you. You're not saying it out loud in your head. I just want to know you. I just want to experience you. I just want to, I, I just want to visit my father. Just like you did in the Garden of Eden. I just, I just want to know. Can you take me to the Garden of Eden? Just take me anywhere. You can take me on tour in heaven. Whatever the case, Lord. So, focus. get a paper and pen and write so sometimes i'm not opening my eyes i'm just doing like this doesn't mean to open my eyes anything will happen but to help your feet
So wherever you are, start coming back because you ascended into his presence. So it's not that you're leaving his presence, but just come back. Some of us might be completely lost. Come back. If you're back, let me know. Hello. So, so what happened? I want to hear in the comment section. What happened to you? I know you're short, but what happened to you? Please. I know the time was short. What happened to you? Please share your experience. What did you hear? What did you see? What did you feel? Okay. What happened to you? It was short, but well, what I have heard this morning will change my life forever. See? Hi, sorry about that. So tell me. Share your experience, please. I'm running low on data, so I kind of trying to post my video. So, but yeah, mm -hmm. can I hear from you? What did you experience? What happened to you? Please tell me. Write in the comment section. I had the word, I am the bright and morning star and the one that gave you joy in the morning hmm. beautiful beautiful are you sure we did not visit the same place i'll share my own i'll be the last person to share mine it had be still my child i am with you beautiful 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 who else who else so that means be still my child. Like you should just constantly be still. Just enjoy stillness, please. Sometimes you can, some people call it soaking. So you can just play worship song. Even go to YouTube, some people call it soaking worship. So you're able to just, just, just present that matter at his feet and then lie down there or stay there and say, I've come to just be still in your presence. I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this issue. I've dropped it at your feet. I've just come to enjoy you. And because of enjoying you, it takes care of everything you came with. So, yeah. Um, okay, Imar said, I think I walked through two giant gates. Was, was at the feet of the throne with cloud of lightning, just like in the Bible. He makes darkness his hiding and a dark cloud. Wow. Wow, wow. Hey, hey. You people travel to heaven, no? That's interesting. Okay. Ah. I will share something with us that he taught me while we're doing this now. He reminded me of. Then AK Sweet said, I saw flash of castles. Hmm. Hmm. Did you? Uh-huh. So when you saw the flash of castles, I also mentioned that 
when you're doing these still prayers, I need you to understand that you're a being in that experience. So you can move, you can talk, you can ask questions. So you can say, oh, what is this castle for? Like you that saw gates, what is this gate for? What am I, what, what is this place? Explain it to me, okay? While I'm attending to others, ask. I'm waiting for the answer. And guess what? The experience did not end, even though we stopped. So, if you, for instance, if you started the um, you still prayers by 5, you had to leave by 5.30, and you saw flashes of light, castles, the way you saw. When you're free and you want to continue, you can just say, okay, Lord, you start from the last thing you saw, which is flashes of castles. You focus on him and you now keep saying, okay, Lord, what did you say? What is this flashes of castles again? It will continue. The experience continues. Do you understand? It's not like this world that if you're watching DSTV and you miss and you didn't record it, you've missed it. No. You, didn't, you, you can continue the experience. Yes. So, Chiamakar saw the storehouse of heaven and it was large and endless. God told me about a client who has cancer and asked me to call her and tell her he has healed her so she shouldn't give up. Oh God, I think we visited the same place, everybody. We went, to, we ascended, we went to, we ascended to the same place because I'm going to share mine. Great. Did you see that? So now in this experience, you know, you just, but you went to know God more. And he choose to show you, you know, like you, you come to visit God. This is what it's be still prayers. It's like you're visiting heaven. You know, sometimes I talk about, I can take all of us to heaven. And they're looking at me. This is how we go to heaven. This is it. So you see, everybody is having heavenly encounters right now. So this is how we go to heaven. And you just come. I just say, uh, like even up to now, if you you notice that your atmosphere still carries that atmosphere of heaven. It's still here. I can still feel that, oh, the presence of God is here. The atmosphere of heaven is here because we went there and we came down with it. So you see, this is the things that people like Catherine Kuma did. If you read her books, you realize that, it's that she prayed around the clock. So sometimes she's just quiet like this. She's doing be still prayers and she's getting lost. She's weeping. Sometimes she starts talking. Sometimes she's just completely silent. So by the time she has gone, like you go into smoke, you're cooking in smoke. When you come out, you smell smoke. So by the time you spend hours, like Catherine, they say Catherine does this thing two four seven. So on the go. So she's constantly there and carrying the residue of his presence. That's why she will pass a street and everybody falls down under power. This is what she's doing. She's just going into his presence, enjoying him. Intimacy. That I might know you, Lord. Lord. That I know you, she just stays there. She either sees visions or God just reminds her of his love, or whatever the case. So you see, like the case of that cancer. Alright? So Emma O is still talking. Emma said that we wandered to a fountain, not necessarily by moving, but more like a wiping away. Okay? Okay? When you say we, that means we, you're not the only, you, you, did you see all of us? Then I zoned out. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to follow up on all emails this thing. Okay, so you see that. <laughs> then zoned away. <laughs> okay. Did you see? See, this is heavenly encounters. This is how we have heavenly encounters. This is how we see God. This is how we enjoy Him. Now, by the time you do this concert, we just did this in 10 minutes, and this is what He honored us with. This, he just gave us a glimpse. Imagine that you spend time, you wake up early hours in the morning, 12 to 3 a.m., and you just say, Lord, I didn't come for prayer, but I just came to know you. And you just say, I just came to know you. Imagine having a three hours encounter, one hour encounter. Do you know what you will become? I'll tell you what you will become. So, um, Prince Electro Holmes, his name is Prince, but his username is Electro Holmes. So, um, God took me on a journey and opened the door of fire. 
and I couldn't look inside. When I asked, when I asked, he said, thirst is the glory of the Lord that you want to know. Uh, see, now, you, all this experience you guys had, you must have a book. You will write it down. So, so usually what I do is, I, when I write it down, maybe I have to do some things now. If I'm washing plates, I'll be like, okay, Lord, yes, you showed me that door of fire. Can I enter it? Okay, I can't look inside it. Oh, do you know why you couldn't look inside? If you read, is it Second Chronicles? I'm not sure where. Just, you can check it and look for it. It's the place where they said that the priests, they worshipped at the temple, right? They worshipped until a thick cloud comes. And you know, this cloud used to look, it's like, what actually happens is that, you know where fire is burning somewhere and there is that smoke? You just know that there is so much smoke. Excuse me, there is so much smoke. So, that's the glory of God. And then, so they said that when they worship so much in the temple, they got to the point that the whole place is saturated with the glory cloud of God. And it will be so much that they can't move. Like, they can't even continue the service. Hello, give me no shadow. They can't continue the service. Now, I want to tell you people, there are three levels to these things. And where I want all of us to arrive at is the glory. Why? Because there is the anointing. The anointing, there is the faith first. So by faith, you heal people, for instance. Let's use healing. By faith, you heal people. So you must work out your faith by praying the Holy Ghost, building up your faith by praying the Holy Ghost. There is the part of um, studying the Word of God so that you have the Word in your spirit by faith. Then, by faith, you lay hands and people get healed. But then there's another place, the anointing of the Spirit. Where there's an anointing upon, it's not for you, it's for, it's for service, it's for people. So, someone comes around, healing anointing comes on you. So, most times, you see men of God, they are preaching, preaching in a crusade, not because of anything. They are waiting for the anointing to come, because it comes. So, once it comes, then they start healing. But so, after the faith level, after the anointing, there is this stage called the glory. In this glory... All you do is bring God down and step out of the way and let him do what he wants to do. That is what Catherine Kuma did. So all Catherine did was throughout the service doing everything that should bring God down. Then she would stand on the stage and people are saying, and and she so she she's in awe. Like I started reading this book again. I started reading God Can Do It Again. Her book of testimonies and good, see here. Like I've had this book for years. Don't say this one. God can do it again. And she said mentioned something there. Powerful. In the introduction parts. She mentioned that she She's very much in awe. She's very much in awe when she sees those miracles. But she has nothing to do with it. Am I the one that took you to heaven? Do I know this place you went to? The main thing is to show you how to go. All right? Good. See what she said. She said, Catherine, Catherine Kuma is just a woman. No one knows better than I that in myself I am nothing. I am not your point of contact. That's why most times when I meet people, I don't want to be Holy Spirit to you. I want to give you, I, I want us to, like I always say, I want us to be plenty. I just want to give you what I know so that you can have your own. I am not your point of contact. I am not a deliverer. I stand before you helpless and yet miracle happens. Why? I marvel just as you marvel. I weep just as you will weep. 
I rejoice just as you will rejoice as through the pages of this book you begin to catch a glimpse of the awesome love and power of God. All right? So, she's, she's, what I'm trying to say here is that she actually can't understand. She does not know how the miracles happen. They just happen. Okay? They just, they just happen. She doesn't know. All she knows is that she brings God down. And that is it. So you bring the glory of God down and step out the way. Step out, step out and then let God do what he wants to do to people. Look at how we're having beautiful encounters. It's priceless. Like this is heavenly encounters we're having. Just because we say, Lord, we want to know you. We want to visit you. You know because we say we want to visit him. Lord, we want to visit you. Uh, your son wants to come back home and visit you today before I go to work today, before I go to this place today. Okay, so let's, let me read. So yes, so that's it for Electro Homes. That's your, um, for the glory, right? And um, Chairman Council said, I was also given a long key called access. Hey, God. This, this chair marker. This chair marker. What, what, what is it? What is the problem? What's going on? Why? Why? Why will you be? Don't worry. Enjoy. See, now that you have access. Now, most people have these encounters and don't know that it's literal. It's literal. You see the, that access? That's why you must come like a child if you want to enjoy the things of the kingdom. So now, access. So throughout today, what you should be doing when you go into God's presence now to do be still, or while you're washing plate or doing anything and your gaze, you're saying, okay, Lord, Talk to me about this key. How can I use it? How does this access happen? What does access mean to you? When you gave it to me, what do I do with it? Oh, you have access to this. You have access to this. Okay. So, can I have it now? Like me, I'm, I don't have time to wait for tomorrow. That's my problem. Can we just practice? So, I'll just be like, okay, Lord, I have access to money today. Like, that's what this key is for, money. Okay. Can we practice now? Can we practice this access now? Yes. Can I? Um, what should I do? Tell me how to use it. Show me. He tells you you do it. You get it. It happens. It happens. You can do be still on. You can do be still and just come drop the long access key into. So it's a continuous experience. So you see that. I don't know what people mean when they say they backslide because this is adventures in God. You, you, why are you backsliding? Like, really? <laughs> I think it's fun. So you just come down. So the next be still prayers you're doing is that you're saying, okay, this long key that I saw, I'm dropping it at your feet, Lord. I've come for further explanation and how I can understand it and how I can use it. Don't just have the experience so that you can, oh, I, I travel to heaven. I, you, know, you don't visit and don't come out with something. No, 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 no. You don't go there and not come out. Angel visited Mary, she became pregnant. No, no, no. You don't go and not come back with something. So, we're not doing this for you to just say, Oh, so you have Jesus. Oh, I, had, I went to heaven today. No. no, no, no. You went to heaven today. What happened? And is it already showing in your life? Is it showing in your life? I'm going to share. The Lord was just even reminding me that I've been doing this be still prayer since I gave my life to Christ and I didn't even know. That's what he was telling me. He was showing me different sins. Now, I'll share this testimony with you people. Now, this is how I was when I was growing up. I had a broad shoulder. Hmm? Like that of a guy. I had a broad shoulder. So, that particular day, it was a Saturday morning. I went to God and I said, Lord, I don't like this shoulder. And I was like... It was broad, like that to figure. So I said, I don't like this shoulder. Please, can you give me a shoulder like that of a lady? Thank you, Lord. You must go like a child. Thank you, Lord. I'm not thinking whether it's possible, whether it's not possible. I'm not, no, no, no. I did this when I was 16. So, I now it left. That night, before I slept, I did be still. I didn't know it's be still. It's now I'm knowing. I just know I just stayed in God. I just went to love on God in his house, like how we did now. Before I go to bed, I was just like, Lord, can I just love on you? 
that's the reason why I like my evening devotion. If I sleep, I just I just want to just to you. I just want to relax with you. I want to be friends with you. I just want to talk to you. And then I just love up on God and from there I slept up. So I now saw myself in a desert. And I was standing, two giant angels were coming, and I was stuck there. And I was like trying to run, but my legs were stuck. And they came, they were with hammer. Each of them. Hammer. Like that movie top. You know that type of hammer. They were just like wah, wah, wah. And I stood like this, and next thing that happened was they now two of them. One person just did boom boom. The other person just boom boom. And my shoulder became slender. It came down like this and then I said, Is he okay? I looked, and I said, yeah, I like it. Then I turned, I woke up. You know, the moment I woke up, I ran to the mirror, and I looked, and my shoulder was now like this. See, do you know how to receive something in the kingdom? It's with gladness. So you see the way you got that key now? You should start dancing with the key. With gladness. It becomes yours permanently. So, because, because you must come like a child. But, but as an adult, if you start overthinking, uh, uh. so like if I had woken up and said, no, that's just a dream, this, I would cancel the experience. But I was excited. I ran to the mirror and I just said, oh my God, I got my shoulders. No, no, no. I went to church and one of my friends said, come on, I don't know, there's something different about you. Yeah, uh, hold on. So there's something different about you and I now did like this. I did like this. She said, Jesus, come on, what happened? I now shared the experience with her. You see, I'm just enjoying you people. I'm losing touch of time. Alright, let me read another person's experience. Um I actually went with my a prayer point. But what I heard was, thank me in praise and I'll do more. Beautiful. Beautiful. I keep seeing the sword of fire. Did you guys notice we're all into, we're having that fire experience. I, you see, sword, the, the inscription, when, so now, what happens? As you see sword of fire, throughout today, when you're studying the Bible, you go on Google, scriptures on sword. Go and study sword. Go and study fire. Go and study then you make sense of the experience. Then you go to God's presence, explain further. This sword of fire, what should I do with it? How should I do it? What I mean is, I'm just trying to make people not to leave a certain experience at that level. Don't do that. Continue with it. It continues. All right? Okay, that's saying, dude. Ego says, I saw a huge curved glass, like we were in an aircraft. Hey, Ego went into my vision. Halagaba. Wait till like we were in an aircraft and we were trying to clean the curved glass because it was foggy. And after that I was trying to open my eyes and I could see cloud and light. Hey <laughs> Jesus Christ. See. See what he said to me. So you know I'm not joking. I am the god of flights. And all of a sudden I saw us in an aeroplane and when this thick cloud he said that I want to reveal myself as the one that makes men, that takes a man from nothing and brings something out of him. That is what he said to me. He said, I am a God of lights. That is what he said to me. I take them from nothing and take them and make them. I want to reveal myself to you people. He said, I want to make a sign and a wonder out of you. He said that, you people see signs and wonders being performed. I want you as a human being to be a sign and a wonder. That is my own. That was what he did to me. Oh, God. Chiamaka finally said, finally, he showed me a man who teaches. And I asked what I was to do with that. And he said, I'm also a teacher. Hmm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Then. Sam says, I saw Jesus walking on dark clouds and flashing light. That is, um, it's not the same thing that I must saw. Allah, God, don't shout, da, 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 da. Oh God, I think we visited the same place, you guys. Then, A.K. Sweet said, I also saw a particular school and he said he wants to uncover stuffs there. Hmm. 
Please go further for more explanation. You see, I left your home. It was too bright. I could not look through it. You see, that's exciting. Tolu said I was deep into a river. You know, the river of his glory. That's the glory realm. It's, yes, 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 yes. So you see, oh God is revealing himself. To, so you can continue the experience. Please don't stop. Don't stop. Oh, it's like a continuous process. Yes, 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 it's a continuous process. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. You sent a question? Okay, no problem. Ah, glory to God. I have to go. Thank God for today's experience. Thank God for today's experience. We should, we should, we're going to have... Okay, tomorrow is Sunday. And I'm not sure about... People go for services. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put it out. Tomorrow's one will be stirring the water. So on Sunday, that we do stirring the waters by 5 p.m. So you can do be still on your own in the morning. But by 5, because of church, because of church, and since our time is 6.30, so let's leave. I won't come up tomorrow morning on Sundays. We're going to do it by 5 in the evening on Sunday which is stirring the water. So I'm going to put out that announcement on my page that tomorrow's prayers is by 5 p.m. But since those that have known to be still prayers, please do be still prayers. Wake up in the morning, do your be still prayers. Thank you so much, Lord, for this encounter you granted us. Thank you for the honor of experiencing your presence, visiting heaven, having heavenly encounters. We are so grateful, we are, we are, we are grateful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you will help us live lives of daily miracles. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I will check the message, but I have somewhere to be in by nine. That's why they were knocking at my door, so I have to run. But as the day goes by, I will attend to the messages. Thank you so much. God bless you. See you next time.